The field of myeloma fibrosis is incredibly active these days. We have uh, uh, numerous studies in different settings and at least about nine different phase three studies uh, with six different medications for their possible approval. So if we go in order of priority, the main issue at the moment is what to do with the patients who have tried and failed the frontline therapy with the JAK inhibitor. As we know, ruxolitinib has been around as a JAK inhibitor for a long period of time, and it's useful very much in patients with very weak spin and bad quality of life. And fedratinib, another JAK inhibitor, was approved about a year ago for the same group of patients in the frontline setting. Once the JAK inhibitors do not work anymore, then we have problems. Life expectancy even can be just between one and two years. So the major focus on many, many studies as a single agent new investigational agent studies are in a second line setting. Then we move on to combination studies where we treat patients with JAK inhibitors and we add another medications to JAK inhibitor in suboptimal responses. Or if they suffer from anemia, for example, because the JAK inhibitors control the symptoms and the spleen, but they don't do much about the cytopenias and anemia among them is the most problematic one. So you have a studies where you treat the patient with JAK inhibitor they have anemia, you add anemia drug to it. Or they, there are studies where you treat patients with JAK inhibitors, you add a medication that would boost what the JAK inhibitors do, more of the spleen, more of the symptoms. And that can be from the very beginning of the therapy with JAK inhibitors as well. It doesn't need to be in suboptimal respondents after some time of exposing these patients to JAK inhibitors. Some studies actually investigate combinations from the very beginning of the day one of any therapy. So you're going from the second line to suboptimal responders to the frontline setting. And of course, there are studies for patients that are progressing to acute myeloid leukemia. That is when the blasts go up, blasts are leukemic cells. And if you have more than 20%, uh, and usually you have none in normal blood, but you may have in myeloid fibrosis few percentages. If it goes above 20, it's acute myeloid leukemia. And we want to prevent that from happening in a transition from normal to abnormal to more than 20, and there are studies focused on that as well. See the whole spectrum. But in terms of the studies that are possibly leading to approval of any medications, let's pilot few. For anemia, drug called loose patercet is gonna be studied in a phase three randomized study in patients who are on JAK inhibitor and transfusion dependent. And the goal is obviously to eliminate transfusion dependency. Medications uh, of two different types, uh, Navitoclax, which is a BCLXL inhibitor, and CPI610, which is a bromodomain inhibitor, you see affecting different proteins in the side cells, are going to be studied in combination with the ruxolitinib from the day one of therapy of myeloid fibrosis patients versus ruxolitinib alone. And then you have uh, studies after JAK inhibitor in the second line setting, like imetalstat. Uh, versus best variable therapy to prolong life of the patients, for example. Or other JAK inhibitors, momelotinib or pacritinib are being studied, and fedratinib as well, in a second line setting, or patients with low platelets, a different a group of patients for different JAK inhibitors. All of this is happening at the same time. So very exciting time for myelofibrosis drug development.